welcome to The Good Time Show. I'm your host, Damon Epps. Today, I'd like to introduce Stephanie Funk, a luxury realtor at England Volkers right here in Bentonville, Arkansas. Stephanie's journey to success has been impressive, starting from tough beginnings to finding massive success by creating and selling a social media influencer marketing company. Then she decided to hit rock bottom before bouncing back and becoming an award-winning real estate agent, consultant, and investor. Today, she'll be sharing her insight on the booming NWA housing market, the exciting future of downtown Bentonville, and where to buy and why. So for the next hour, we're going to find out how Stephanie Funk found the good times. I'm so excited to be here, by the way. Oh, I'm super excited. Yeah. Um, it's very nice. We're here in Blake Street. Um, what? Let's just start with, because I always want to know what brought you to Bentonville, because I, once again, am the biggest fan of Bentonville. I love this place. There's nothing better than this place. Some people can argue with me, but I will tell them they're idiots. But that's well, fine. I need that on tape for my clients that are moving in from out of town. Oh, just tell them to call me. Okay, I'll have them call. I need to be like the welcome, I need to be like the gift package of Bentonville. Maybe that's my job. Yes. You just need to hire me to just be like, oh, Damon's going to take you on a good times Bentonville journey and I oh will gosh, show them all. Oh my gosh, can we get a bus? Like a tour bus? That's what, that's all I, I want a tour bus. That's okay, what we're I, gonna, you know, no, you know what I'm going to do? This is real. This is in the works actually. Okay. I want to get a golf cart and yes. brand it all yes. white. You know, my yes. branding is white and black and just like have the England Volkers funk group golf cart that I tour people around downtown Bentonville in, and I think it would just be the best time. So it could be the good times golf cart. Well, that's a, I want you to know that I am built, I'm building a house, uh -huh. right? So I'm building this house and part of me wants to have the golf cart in the back. It's the good time golf cart. And I want to take them because there's somebody doing that. So no offense. We're going to step on your toes a little bit, but um, we're going to have competing good time golf have, carts. We're going to have competing good but time golf carts. But the star of both of them will be Damon Epps. So you're going to be a busy man. Okay, yeah. Okay. So okay, how go. I got to Bentonville. I am from Little Rock. I was raised kind of latchkey between Little Rock and Chicago. My sister and I were, I don't, how do you say, separated at birth? Not really. Oh, yeah. Get, oh, yeah. Well, I, well, I mean, well, I mean, yeah. We were, okay. So well, you weren't separated at birth, but you were separated. Shortly after. Which is just a big story. You can't just tell an audience right. member like, oh, yeah, we're separated. <laughs> me, and my, me and my sister are separated. We, yeah. Okay. So I was born in Little Rock into a single wide trailer in Southwest Little Rock. And um, turns out that my biological parents um, just weren't it, at 19 years old ready for their second child. And so the courts helped disperse us to one set of grandparents in Chicago and one in Little Rock. So it was the 70s. Things were done differently. It wasn't so much about the kids as it was about the adults, I suppose. So anyway, I grew up going back and forth between Little Rock and Chicago so that we could, so that my sister and I could see each other. And, uh, but home base was Little Rock. And we can get more into that story because there's obviously a lot to it. But um, I ended up going to college at the U of A up here and went home. What did you study? I studied advertising and journalism. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. I was pre-law. And then I found out that you could like major in making pretty ads <laughs> and writing copy. Like you could get an actual degree in that. And I was like, people are in college having fun and I'm studying political science. Why? Why yeah. are we doing that? So yeah. I switched it up. It turns out there's more, maybe more job security. In the other way? In the legal. It's like, because I did, you know. Industry, yeah. yeah. But whatever. We make sacrifices. It's fine. You know, okay. funds first. So I graduated, went home to Little Rock. Um, oh, this is another big bomb that I'm going to drop and then move on. Um, met my first husband, married him. He passed away. Right. We can circle back to that later if we want. You know, um, it's a lot. So then I reconnected with a friend from college and we started dating long distance and he lived up here. He still lived up here. So um, we ended up deciding to get married. And so I moved back up here to be with him. And plus, I needed a change of scenery after my first husband died. Like it is. I was 29. That was very overwhelming. And all of a sudden you're walking around a town where everybody's looking at you with really like understandably looking at you with sympathy and wanting to be helpful and kind, but also that's a really weird place to be in when people kind of like don't want to, you know, bother you or disturb you. Right. And they, you know, they want to express their love and concern, but also you're kind of freaking them out, you know? Right. So it was just a weird, it was a good time to make a move. So I came back up here. I've been gone for, I think close to 10 years. When I left, the only time I had ever seen Bentonville and or Rogers was one or two times we really needed some beer on a Sunday. And the only way to make that happen was to drive from Fayetteville to Missouri. 
normally we planned better so that we wouldn't have to go to Missouri on Sundays, but there were a couple of occasions by necessity we had to go to Missouri. So nothing. I remember nothing about these two towns existing the whole time I was in college. I come back 10 years later. I swear to God, it was like I was in the twilight zone. The minute I came over the hill, the first time you can see like where Top Golf is now mm-hmm. and those three big crosses yep. in the embassy suites. I literally was like something I'm this is not re- I'm in the matrix something weird is happening so what what time period is this so like you so you're you're I think I came back up here it was either 2006 or I think it was 2008 2008 okay so like almost 10 years nine years between when I left and when I came back and it went from farmland nothing to see two-lane highway to real freeway or interstate or whatever you call it with buildings and promenades and I honestly felt like I was crazy. Pinnacle was starting. Yeah, Pinnacle was there and it was so surreal to me that a town could just pop up. I was like, what on earth happened? And so then I started kind of looking around going, this place is actually kind of amazing. It just sounded a lot more appealing to move up here and watch the growth happen than to stay in Little Rock and half. And Crystal Bridges started in what, 2013? 11. 11, 11, 11. 11, 11, 11. Yeah. Okay, I should know that. I, yeah. um, okay, so okay, so it has been like 12 years. Um, okay, so this was right before Crystal Bridges. They, they were, it was in the works, so mm-hmm. things were really starting to move already. Yeah. And so you were living in, so okay, you were living in Little Rock. Mm-hmm. Your sister was in Chicago, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, your husband died. Mm-hmm. All this stuff is not such good times on the Good Times show, but we're gonna. <laughs> but the good times get in toward the end. Yes, Stephanie Fox's life right now. Mediocre times. It. These are mediocre times right here. <laughs> They're not such good times. Um, it's gonna get worse. It's gonna get worse before it gets better, kids. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. Okay, so so your husband dies. Totally get that. You wanted to like. I was about to lose my mind. I was a stay at home mom, and I was a writer. I'd always been a writer. I'd written for magazines. I'd, I'm just you know I have creative outlet. Mm-hmm. And Steve said, why don't you, why don't we figure out how to get you set up on a blog and you can just put it all out there. Nobody in this town knows you. So if you want to talk about people in town, you know, whatever. I don't know that he said that, but that's what I said in my head. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I told myself. Anyway, so Mm. I start this blog and um, it was a, I was, I've always been like super curious about technology Mm -hmm. And he was really good at technology. So I started a tech blog for women. Okay. So anyway, I did that, did the blog, loved it, had so much fun. It was a lot of work, learned a lot about search engine optimization. And I was getting pitches from brands and they were sending me free things. And um, I got to go on all these experiences like OnStar. I went to Detroit with OnStar and got to drive cars like I stole them and like do all this crazy stuff. And um, so there was this guy here who had a e-commerce startup and he reached out to me on Twitter and his wife and I had interacted. She was also a blogger. And he said, um, I hear, you know, a thing or two about like social media or SEO. Can we meet? And basically by the end of our meeting, then he took me across the street to his building where he had these robots that were doing fulfillment. And it was the most fascinating thing I'd ever seen. And there were all these like 10 year olds coding in the computers. And I was like, I don't know. I honestly don't know what you do here, but can I work here? Can I have a job? Because I'm losing my mind at home. Like I love my child, but I need to not, we need to not be together all the time. And so I went to work for him and set up, he at the time he had like 13 online brands and I set up Facebook pages for him. And then one of those ended up like he really focused in on it, let go of all the others. And he ended up raising a ton of money, venture capital, watched him go through that journey um, supported, you know, in my role the best way I could. And, um, then was approached by a local, a new local venture capital firm that I had never heard of. And they said, we want to hire you to support. We've heard of you. We want to hire you to support our portfolio companies. So Um, did you get those jobs from blogging? So all of this like stems back to my experience from blogging. This venture capital firm hired me to help their portfolio companies but they didn't really have any portfolio companies yet. They were new. And so I went to those guys and I was like, look, I've figured out some things about, and influencer marketing wasn't yet a phrase. Didn't exist. We had, didn't exist. Anyway, I went to join this, this venture capital firm. They didn't really have a whole lot for me to do. Like I kind of felt lost at sea and, but I had figured out some things about what I do specifically. Like I had written some, 
some math. I'd written an algorithm around what makes an influencer influential because this was the dawning also of when people were buying followers and buying engagement. And there were whole like chat rooms that you'd go in. And mm-hmm. So I figured out some metrics around what really indicated true influence. And I went to the guys at the firm and I was like, I want to do this. I want to start it. And um, <laughs> the funny, this is my favorite part of the story. Like this is the part that, that brings me a great amount of pride is these, they were like, uh, no, thank you. Like we're not investing in ideas. We're more of a series A kind of group. And, um, but one of them said, if you will go secure a contract and come back to us, um, then we'll talk. By the end of the week, I had three contracts totaling $150,000. I had SC Johnson, Johnson & Johnson, and then the place that I had been, Acumen, had signed on. And I didn't even exist yet. And so they were like, oh, okay. And they gave me some seed funding. And then I built this agency and had a blast doing it. Um, And, you know, we had some really early successes, learned a ton, and got it up to doing you know, a few million in revenue. It w- That experience was probably one of the most powerful experiences and it affects everything I do to this day. And what do you mean by that? Like the things that I learned about investing, the math I learned, the conversations I'm able to have, the network that I gained, um, the self-discovery that I did along the way, because I will tell you, there were so many times on that journey Um, my board was entirely men. And then when I would go to the venture capital company and have meetings, it was all men. And so I spent a lot of time and energy being one of the guys, like trying to blend in Mm -hmm. and, and hold on to my seat at the table, you know, laughing at the inappropriate jokes, being a dude, bro. Like (laughs) I think I bought some Patagonia, you know, (laughs) like just trying to blend and uh, right. I do like that. It's, it's like a requirement. Like if you get a finance degree, they issue you that when you walk across the stage, like here's your best. Here you go. Um, and what I learned on this journey and mostly not until after in reflection and a lot of therapy, um, was that the reason that I have gotten to where I am is uniquely because of who I am and the experiences that I, the lenses that I look through and that it is a hundred percent. Okay. To be entirely um, feminine. Like, I don't have to suffer fools gladly, I guess, Mm -hmm. for another, you know, not that I think these guys are fools. They definitely are not fools. They are very smart and they have very good lawyers. So, like them a lot. Um, (laughs) Great guys. Um, But I learned all these life lessons about how to be a grown up, how to be a CEO, how to, what not to do. What I find fascinating is the, um, I've interviewed a lot of people through the years doing different shows and all that kind of stuff. And I think you always take risks. It's probably something that you've always done. You've, I mean, you kind of like, it probably stems from like being separated from your family and like kind of having to, I guess, probably like scrounge or if you wanted to make it or like, you know, the world was against you and I guess you either sink or you survive. My drive is because I don't have a safety net and I've never had a safety net. And so if I'm going to succeed and be financially secure or any other way secure, it's on me, right? So I've created some security for myself through my startup and that exit. I've created security for myself um, through real estate, by owning real estate, by selling real estate. So my kids are, they do theoretically have a safety net, although I'm trying to teach them as if they don't. But Charles Portis, who wrote True Grit, calls it um, escape velocity. There are people that never leave a small town because they can't achieve escape velocity. There are people that don't leave scenarios and situations because they can't achieve escape velocity. There are people that don't leave. What's escape velocity? What's the It's just the the energy it takes to get out of something. Oh, it is. It's true. Yeah. Right. Like it takes a certain amount of velocity to leave a place, a situation, Mm -hmm. an addiction, anything. It's so easy to just stay comfortable and Mm -hmm. stay where you are. And so like, I want to show other women how to achieve escape velocity, whether it's escaping from a dead end job that has a 60,000 a year salary cap that you can never get beyond or a toxic relationship or an addiction or 
create general generational wealth for their kids. Like you can do that in a very short amount of time, but people think there's this this path that we have to take when there's none. Of, there's really no path. I just figured it out, but I watched other people in the startup space just. People were just figuring out Facebook too, you know, like somebody just figured that out. And so I, that's when I kind of realized nothing's real. Like we can just make it all up. I can make up whatever I want. And as long as I'm willing to do the work, it'll become whatever I want it to become. Do you believe, are you, cause you said this the other day well, very quickly and you were like, it's all make believe. Like it's all make believe, <laughs> which is kind of what it was like the gift or the secret or all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You definitely believe a little bit of the. Like, yeah, so I'm super into um, right now. Yes, I'm woo woo. It's a short answer. Yes. Um, not so much the law of attraction in the way the secret talks about it, where like if I paint a picture of a person, they will appear in my life. Mm -hmm. But I do believe in the reticular activating system where like if you think about a yellow car, you will suddenly start noticing the yellow mm -hmm. cars. And so yep. if you think about things every day to be grateful for, you will start noticing more things to be grateful for. Yep. And so I build on that. Yeah. I've, I've always somehow, I didn't know that this kind of existed in my life, but it's like right now, like I've literally changed my life. I really don't know where it's going. You right. And I, I, I've literally, you know, I produced yeah. reality TV for 20 years. I'll probably go and do some more shows. I'm not trying to do every show anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm here. I'm trying to make a living here now. I've started a podcast. This isn't paying the bills. Um, but <laughs> I mean, but what was the, the ten thousand dollars I gave you though for uh -huh. this, to be on this? Well, the ten thousand dollars that's you not know gonna pay what? the bills. There's a lot of partying that goes along here okay. in Bentonville. There's a lot of parties. <laughs> um, so, you know, reinventing reinventing yourself, yeah. but every single thing in my life, I've always started these little journeys and somehow it's always worked out. And I've I've and it's and it's funny how everything kind of works. It may not work out exactly like how I wanted it to be, right? You know, right. I went to LA to be a stand-up comic and then I kind of then and then you weren't reality, funny and then, so. and then I wasn't funny and yeah. that really is a bitch that's, that's hard when you're a comic <laughs> it's really hard so no, you know and then I tried modeling and then you know yeah. and then the ab the ab was you really just, good and yeah. just had one ab so it wasn't really a good thing um no but there are two things yeah. one if you've ever read the alchemist it if you, you haven't read that I haven't oh my God. okay so you just I you just own, like I do own the book it takes like five minutes to read it's like it's seven long. pages long it's a fable and it talks about exactly what there are no wrong choices in the journey. We just are on a journey and we just are. And, and uh, Cheryl Sandberg says this too, like our, our careers are not ladders anymore. They're jungle gyms. And, but the greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts I've ever been given was um, shortly after I exited my startup, um, I worked with someone very closely on my mental health and <laughs> She taught me how to truly detach from the outcome in any situation and just watch life unfold in front of your eyes. Because when I am attached to an outcome, like say, let me think of something. So say we were going to shoot this podcast today and I had five points that I wanted to make sure I covered in this podcast. How boring would that be? Like, right? Like if I had put this podcast in a box and said, these are the things we must talk about. And I had like note cards with my points. How dull. But like, we're just letting this journey unfold. I don't know where right. we're, this podcast may have no point. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> It may it's, go nowhere. It's funny when people kind of come on because I've done so many interviews in my life that like, I, I, I just sit down and talk to people and we, we right. figure out where we're going to go. And I'm, I'm pretty trusting in the process and I feel it's always worked out. I mean, it's, it's literally always worked out. That's exactly right. Um, but it's funny. I, I recently, I've got, I've got a podcast coming up with somebody and they were like, should we go over the, I mean, he is, he's a very structured person. And I know he wants, he was like, he wants to know what the process going to be like before it happens. And I'm like, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, to me, it's like the interesting stuff that we're going to talk about is really how it just did it unfolds and what we're, yeah. how we, how we connect. How did you get into real estate and what, what drew you to real estate? Okay. So when you exit a startup, one, you generally, um, spiral deep into addiction. Well, I'll just tell you the, like the whole ugly truth is they asked me to take a leave of absence because I, well, I don't know why necessarily. I assume it's because m perhaps my life was an actual train wreck at the time. And maybe that was vis more visible on the outside than I realized. Um, I was drinking, how do we say, to excess? Is that the, 
Is that the polite way? And uh, it was not I was good. throwing them back. Yes. Like six months after I exited, I kind of looked around and went, I don't have any friends. <laughs> where, all, where all those people go that used to like to hang out with me? And they were all gone. So you were a hot mess. I was a, what, yeah, where we're going with this is hot mess. Hot mess. You Hot mess. So I'm assuming in this world, you are talking about hitting rock bottom. Yes. Yeah. Well, I hope. I really hope that it was rock bottom for me because it was ugly. It was dark. Those were dark days. And so I checked myself out of society and went and checked myself into a rehab in Florida. Um, a lot of my friends like to tease me and tell me I went to Passages Malibu. I did not go to Passages oh, Malibu. I've done a few shows in Passages Malibu. Have you? I have. They have entertainment come in. Are it you kidding is, me? It is the, f I gotta tell you, I mean, it was, I don't even know how you get sober there. I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that I went to, they were giving him volume every day, um, which I That's thought was amazing. funny. Um, right. But I mean, it, it, there was a lot of celebrities there every time I was there. And it just, it was like a party. I mean, I just. So that was not. Very lovely. Right. Place. I was I mean, not. overlooked the bluffs. It's just God. lovely. That's been six years now, I think. It's 2017. So do that math. Okay. Um, and. You know, I just have put one foot in front of the other and continued to follow opportunities, kind of acquired by this this uh, software development firm. Mm -hmm. And then by it, that was fine. Um, and then from there, went to work for a company that sells furniture. And in working there, I got to do a lot of the real estate um, work for the guy who owned the company. Okay. He was doing a lot of personal real estate investing and was flipping houses, investing in houses. And so he encouraged me to go get my real estate license. Um, and I could tell that this was something that was really interesting to me and that I might have a knack for it mm -hmm. from the jump. And so um, I went and got my license and um, joined Engel and & Volkers, and it has been off to the races ever since then. You are one of the known real estate agents here in Bentonville and downtown Bentonville. Mm -hmm. I think your name comes up all the time. And to think that you've only been doing it four years, five yeah, three, years, three. three years is mind blowing. Um, I'm assuming there's a lot more agents that have been doing it also much longer that probably hate you for coming in. And oh, maybe time. I think that's flattering though. When people don't like you because yeah, you're I doing so. really well, that's good that I'm killing it. No, <laughs> really. Most but I like do me. like, I, I do people need to like me less and maybe I would do a lot better in life. Oh, maybe. Maybe, Maybe you should be a snob. Oh, I could do that. You try that. That'd Maybe really try that on for next week and yeah, just see. Just really just, yeah. and just be snob. Own your inner mm, snob. No, thank no, you. No, I host, I actually, ho so I believe it's just as important to network with um, other agents as it is with potential clients. And so I host a weekly clubhouse. Do you know what clubhouse is? It's an audio platform. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So the Twitter, host, Twitter owned it, right? And Or still owns. Just Maybe somebody owns it. I don't know. China yeah. probably owns it. Yeah. It's fine. No clubhouse. Was, but it's like a big yeah. conference call. Okay. Yep. But I host a weekly clubhouse for agents from all brokerages because I don't like, it was surprising to me how like agents get very territorial about their brokerage and what, like they don't collaborate with each other outside of that. But then we all have to work together on a transaction. And so I'm trying to do things to change that, to make it more collaborative and kind of rising tide lifts all boats among the agents. And I think in the spirit of that, I have continued to attract more business to myself. But I also love, like, I, my specialty is really the luxury market and the downtown Bentonville market. And I was lucky enough to get started in that market. And so I love my clients. One of my, one of the people I work with, actually my broker, she might kill me if I say this, but she calls me the snob whisperer. She's like, you can handle difficult personalities in a way that no one else can. You know that it's literally what I do. Like my job in reality was the snob whisperer. So well, I'm the I'm a I'm a cast whisperer. So okay. in oh, okay. like so, if if they are the worst humans alive, and this is truly yeah. like on you know, like if my agents today, if if they're the worst humans alive to deal with on reality TV, the network will send my name. <laughs> they're like because I can get along with anyone. Like I truly yeah. can. And I've and look at my resume. I have I have worked with some of the hardest to deal with 
reality this is cast why we members. Connect. Yeah, it's like, and I love them. I, by the way, I sit down with these people that everyone's like, you'll never, you don't understand. They're a terrible human. They're the worst person ever. I literally sit down and we become best friends, and yeah. it's literally over and over again, no matter yeah. who it is. You know, there's really, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's a. I think. I think that it is a very rare personality that can do that. Let's just talk about Bentonville for a little while yeah. because there is a lot going on. I moved here, like I said, a year and a half ago. And just even, it's even longer than a year and a half, a year and eight months, whatever it is. Within a year and eight months, there is twice the amount of restaurants. There are, there's more houses coming in. I don't know if there's going to be a dip in the Benton, downtown Bentonville market or not because of all the doctors coming in because of the whole health stuff or what, but... Who knows, I yeah. guess. Um, well, there, if you look at it, it's coming from all fronts. I mean, there are mountain bikers buying second homes in Bella Vista. There are doctors coming in from Whole Health. There's still other medical facilities. Like Mercy is hiring a ton of doctors. And Arkansas Children's Hospital is still recruiting doctors. And then we have people like you. They're like, what is this tiny utopia that yeah, I've just stumbled upon? Totally. I will live there now. Yep. And so, like, hardly any of my buyer clients are from here. In fact, if I had to really think about it. None. Ma maybe one. Yeah, none. maybe one. I everybody and I talk to, it is one of those because everyone's like, I just don't want all these New Yorkers or Californians. Yeah. Now look, I'm a Texan, so whatever. But I am for sure a California guy coming in here because you know, my house in California would have been 1.6 million, and right. for that shack, and it's a shack. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was definitely whatever. Well, it's, the, it's much the, more now, but it's yeah. The disconnect between the locals and the people who are transplanting here is that if you come from California and you owned your home in California, nobody owns a home in California. Oh, is that, the, is that what it is? Well, I mean, you buy, I feel like, unless you're super rich, but everyone just kind of rents their, I mean, they buy it from a bank, Yeah, but it's like a 60 year mortgage. Right. And for sure. so you don't really ever own your home. But even income. still they can pay cash for a decent home here with the net proceeds yes. from their sale in 100%. California exactly. or Austin yeah. or Salt Lake yep. city or Denver. I have a ton of Denver clients. Yeah. If you bought a house 10 years ago in any of those cities, you can yeah. buy a house in cash here. Yes. And so the local community that was once, you know, populating downtown Bentonville. He, well, here's a good example. I had a house downtown listed for sale. This was pre COVID. It was 525. God only knows what it's worth now. Um, and in the set, I think in the same day, we had two different parties look at it. One was from um, either Salt Lake City or Park City in Utah. Um, and one was from Little Rock. The couple from Little Rock, their agent called me and they were like, are you kidding with this price? Like they can, you're never going to get this price. This is ridiculous with your price per square foot. What are you thinking? Just kind of raked me over the coals. And a, like 30 minutes later, the agent for the party out of Utah called and said, my client is thrilled, cannot believe he can get this amount of house for this much. Are you, do you have offers in hand? Are they over asking? We're going to be all cash. And they ended up writing an over asking offer all cash. And the, so the couple from Little Rock is probably still looking for a house up here because yeah. they can't, the Arkansas people can't wrap their mind. Yeah. And they, they're still it. waiting for the deal. I mean, I just, it yeah. was very, in fact, we were, when you were doing that Dave Mars thing, do you remember that little, the little, the little, angry kid that was like asking all the questions no I don't oh remember. my god he was just like yeah and it was so weird he kept going like we are oh, in I walmart country this. we were in walmart country he kept yeah. going well you know the stock returns on walmart were really down i was like you're an idiot you're first an idiot. of all yeah. walmart is fine i don't know if you yeah. know how it works but the stock market goes up and the stock market goes down <laughs> well they're gonna have to a ball and there's obviously going to be a dip. And I was looking at the kid and I go, there is not going to be a dip. There is like, Oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. It was so yeah. funny. I was like, he's so angry and he is just waiting so for angry. like. And do you know so that angry. he has since sold his house and I think is renting? Yeah. He's because he's waiting. He's waiting timing the market. The yeah. He's timing the market. Oh, Which boy. is like. the Okay. So here's the thing that everyone needs to know. If the interest rates go down, the house prices go up. And if the. Interest rates go up, the house prices go down. So it's all basically the same. It's the same, but you're actually a little bit better off when the interest rates are higher and the house prices are lower because then you refinance in a couple of years and you've got more equity in your house. Right. So it's my sister said that. The, oh, she's a genius. Yeah. She's really smart. Um, so the timing she of the was market. Like, she was like, you know, Damon, there was a time when twelve percent was what it was, and 
Yes. All this talk about like interest rates going up. Yes. It's just that everybody's been living in this false world for so long. Then was like, you know, interest rates are terrible. She was like, yeah. it five percent is not terrible. Anyway, it's fine. I mean, Bentonville's gonna be fine. Like we have so we have whole health coming, which is in my understanding, there's whole health and then the medical school is a separate mm -hmm. thing. Yep. Crystal Bridges is, is about to be double yep. the size. Yes. We continue adding bike trails and freeways. And I was at this Bentonville, I think it was a There's a, Lady Slipper now. And no, I don't know if you've been there. I Lady been Slipper. Yet. Oh my God, we're gonna go have drinks. Lady but we Slipper. aren't because I don't drink. Well, you know what I mean. We can have a tea, whatever. <laughs> it's uh, they have burgers. We can no. eat a smash burger. You know, together. And but I it did. is a, it is so cool. Is like it? you sit, you sit in there and you're like, I am now in a sit. Like you, uh, it's you don't weird. feel like you're here. You don't feel like you're here. Like yeah. there's conifer too, which it kind of gives me that same thing. I love conifer. Like conifer yeah. is like I'm sitting in conifer and I go, where am I? Yeah. Like it just doesn't feel like I'm in a little town at all. It's going to feel a little lopsided because a normal town this size, we're what, 50,000 people mm -hmm. in Bentonville? A normal town this size would not have Blake Street House and Crystal Bridges and a splash pad that's an ice rink and 21C. An airport. And not a, just an airport, a private airport, two private airports. Two private airports. And a, and a, and a real airport. Yeah. I mean, it just. It's it's lopsided. It's and the bars Truman that Show. Are like just as cool as anything in like Vail, Colorado. Yes. The most amazing food. Um, so we talk about those things and I give them perspective and help them acclimate because I think the growth here, I feel like once the new campus is open, like the the hesitation you hear locally is like, oh, it's a bubble. It's not a bubble. Like the growth is gonna be exponential it's the crazy. minute that campus opens. Well, I mean, there was parking always behind Lady Slipper. Yeah. And now there's no parking. There's no parking. Every event now is on. It's like it's like a Taylor Swift concert. It just it's gone. I can't even yeah. get into anything. I and feel like I'm about to start watching the watching the ticker. That's hilarious. It's gone. If you know somebody, let me in. OK, I'll do that. I don't. Um, <laughs> but what I think a good indicator is like. If you look around and all you see is parking decks with no buildings next to them, brand new parking decks. Right. Like, just think about it for a minute. Well, that's what's exciting, too, is that it, that's the one thing that's here is that, like, there's a lot of, th everything's kept a secret here, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's like we get know, little surprises. People know, but they don't know. Like, yeah. you know, they were like, oh, there's going to be a, a luxury hotel. I mean, that thing is coming up so fast over there. I know. Or right that's the next to my ledger. office. Oh, oh yeah. and then we, okay, so then we have the Ledger, which is yeah. literally the world's first bikeable yeah, building. that was like, my first interview. What? Yeah. You know, that's it's incredible. Amazing. And then, okay, so we've got the Wellness Hotel, then we've got another boutique hotel, then there's another hotel. It's insanity. And so it's anybody insanity. who says that this is a bubble, like people are just Did you see getting... what they're doing right here? They're on A Street. They're going to build that whole, I just saw like the- uh -uh. Like it's oh, gonna, the park and stuff. The park, and I yeah. think there's going to be water in it. There's so there's going to be there's there's two features. There's a um, an entertainment park, like with a there's going to be like a little amp downtown. Okay. There's going to be a music venue downtown, which is going to be incredible, and then there's going to be a massive children's park downtown okay. also. So that's going to be a whole entertainment zone over there. Anyway, so I was at this Bentonville. I think it was a, a like a. 25th anniversary of downtown Bentonville Inc. or something. And Tom and Stuart Walton were there and it was a panel and they were asked, okay, so what's coming? And the vibe that I got from them, it what, and I don't remember what their exact words were, but it was like, we wish we could tell you. Like we, it's, it's so big and it's so exciting. It's so crazy. And we can't tell you. Yeah. There's rumors. I don't want to like talk about rumors because then people are like, Dan, why were you talking about I know, but um, we could start one. Yeah, they start one. Yeah, because whatever they're going to build when this, because the new, the home. Campus, the, the new the, home office, yeah. Well, but the home office right now. Yeah. That whole area is a massive piece of land. Yeah. You know what my daughter thinks it should yeah. be? Water park. Oh, well, I think it's going to be an arena is what I hear. I want, oh, that's good. I want it to be, we need a Walton Art Center up here. Oh, and then my um, my friend Brooke Brewhouse, um, I hope I didn't screw your name up. She is actually, because. And that's the other thing. It's like you forget that there's other pieces of this town that are even becoming cool. Right. You go down 8th Street past the home office and right over 8th Street in Walton, oh. just on the right, there's going to be that new park there. Mm -hmm. And my friend Brooke is opening a coffee shop that's connected to, I think, a cat 
Okay. That and best friends going to be animal shelter. There's best friends a, you can literally shelter. go in there when they open and hang out in the cat rooms and have go right. get your coffee. So that my that's my friend's Brooks little oh my place. God, I don't I'm know if you so know her yet. I'm so excited about that. Like that that releases I have all asthma, the... so I don't really like I mean I like cats now because it's not as bad, but yeah. so but, just take an know. allergy pill and go. That's what I'm afraid Because I feel like it releases all the happy brain I'll chemicals. Just be, you know, using like, little paws to stir my cat coffees. Right. So What's nice. that hair? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you where do you expect this place to go? What are you excited about when it comes to this town, or what do you like? So, what kind of what the property values? You don't see property right. values are going down. Downtown Bentonville literally saw fifty percent appreciation for a time. I just went to. I was a big fan of Austin. I went to Austin growing up. I'm a Dallas kid. Mm -hmm. Go to Austin always doing the. Well, that's what's funny too. Is that like I used to party in Austin a lot in the '90s. Mm -hmm. Austin was the exact same size as Northwest Arkansas. Okay. So it was literally 500,000 people. Yeah, so Austin, total. which is about the same size, because yeah. it's not just downtown. Like here, it's just a little smidgen of a community of Bentonville right. is. But if you take all of Northwest Arkansas, it's about the same size as Austin. Yeah. And it was 500,000 people. So we're really what Austin, literally what Austin was in 1990, because yeah. we only had, it was only 6th Street. People think it was like Austin was this big thing because they were in the 2000s or whatever. But right. Austin was only 6th Street. And it was this cute little community and it was everybody was vibing. I just went back last week and I know people still talk about how great Austin is. Everything that was cute is gone. It is literally just high rises. There's so that's what I worry about. Like yeah. I, we have such cute downtowns. I would love to see downtown Rogers preserved. I would love to see the vibe of downtown Bentonville. You know, obviously we're going to have some growth and, and I also hope that we keep the, you know, this Ozark modern architecture style that we're right. kind of owning mm -hmm. I think that's so good for our area to have an identity because yeah. Arkansas is not known for its stylistic identity anywhere. This state loves a red brick, you know, right. and it's like if we could just have something cool, let us have this. I agree. And then like downtown should be in Bella Vista because there's nothing there now. You might right. Yeah. A big downtown. It's fine. Right. And like downtown Springdale has its own vibe. Mm -hmm. Downtown Fayetteville has its own vibe. So I would love to see those things completely preserved and linked with bike trails, which is what's kind of already happened but I think there's still you know some work that can be done there and then like if we could just minimize the sprawl a bit like you know how everything's going out to Centerton and mm -hmm. which are great communities Centerton Elm Springs all those they're great communities but the 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 development out there just feels so forced forced yeah I think that that's people are really well, Rogers have really has taken a hit because everyone thought that Rogers was just going to explode. But I really think that Bentonville's got to fill up before Rogers explodes because, yeah. I mean, this is the this is the mecca. I mean, this is like no yeah. matter what anybody says, like this is still the coolest place, in my opinion. I mean, I yeah. could be wrong. I know people hate it and then they want to go to Rogers. But Rogers, you know, Rogers during I mean, they had all those beautiful restaurants and all of them closed because I mean, it was COVID and all of that. Yeah. And I feel like they're finally getting back on their feet. But we still don't have enough people almost to fill up. I mean, we're just, I feel like we're just now almost getting to where restaurants are starting to make real profits. Yes, I And agree. all of that. Um, a I mean, lot there's, of them were like Over subsidized. by the Meteor with all those all those apartment buildings that are over by the Meteor. When those fill up, we're going to have another thousand people in downtown. I mean, it's going to be, yeah. a, it's going to be a good time. It's a I'm lot. I'm not the person who doesn't want a ton of people. I know. I want, I'm, not, I'm, I want people I'm with everywhere. you. I'm like. Every time somebody's everywhere. like, I don't want all these people. I'm like, I don't want more I people. Do. I, but like cool. Rogers is Rogers to me is like little Dallas. I call it Dallas town. Yes. And so interestingly, a lot of people don't know this. Um, there are, are not gated communities in Bentonville. And I think it's oh, some kind true, of yeah. ordinance that prevents it. You cannot have a gated community in Bentonville. So if you are of the gated community variety of people, which is a demographic, you have to go to Rogers. And what's interesting about that, and I don't know if this was the forethought about that or not, but it has created two very different vibes among the neighborhoods. And I think there's a place for both. I agree. I always forget that Rogers has two. I always consider Rogers just the downtown Rogers. And I forget that Rogers is also top golf, golf and, and pinnacle. pinnacle. And I forget that that's a whole that's shadow just, Valley, me, Liberty yeah. bell, Hearthstone, yeah, so that's, all, that's just a separate world to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's where all the like the big Dallasy restaurants are right. too. You know, yes. like here, everything in downtown Bentonville is tiny. Mm -hmm. You know, just our downtown. The this geographic reminds me of Vale. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It does remind me of Vale and Aspen, kind of. Yeah, and Aspen. That's yeah. right. You know, when I was in Aspen, I would keep saying Vale, but it's really Aspen. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, I was supposed to like it's more Aspen, but yeah. yeah. 
And Crested Butte, kind of. Have yeah. you ever been to Crested Butte? Yeah. Just it's, cute it's little my, yeah, Aspen downtown. Crested Butte. I've got to stop saying Vail. I always say Vail, and I went to Vail once. <laughs> not if somebody kind of wants stuff. to buy something in downtown Bentonville, what, is, what does it take? Um, A lot of money. <laughs> 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 if you're being real, uh, where it depends. I mean, if you want to buy something and tear it down and build your own thing, you know, you're looking at one price for the land and homes are anywhere from 400 to 600 a square foot in downtown Bentonville, depending on how close you are to Central Avenue and to the square. Um, so now it's 400 a square foot. Uh -huh. We have subsidized luxury here. Like, we're all getting to live this very glamorous life on very middle class earnings <laughs> you know like i don't know that in la i would be a member of soho house oh no that well, right it, well you also i didn't get accepted with soho house <gasps> I, I mean i've produced some large television shows or whatever but i i was aged out it, when you say things about like community right so like I loved where I lived and we had like where I lived in Hollywood. It was, it, it's an amazing little place. Now that kind is even kind of COVID kind of ruined that. Mm -hmm. I think the way things are in Hollywood have kind of ruined it because, you know, at least back in the day, they would at least try to protect your stars. Now I feel even if they're like a good person, if they screw up once that all they're trying to do is ruin their lives. So now they've all left LA and moved to little towns like this and in, in Tennessee and you know, yeah. they're all kind of everywhere to kind of live their life. But it's so hard to be part of a community. Um, recently, my brother started working at a grocery store because um, he couldn't find a job and he, whatever. He's super happy right now. My 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 grandfather in Dallas was a grocery clerk. Well, gro he worked. For, he was an independent. He worked for a very small grocery. Worked for a grocery store his entire life. I mean, legitimately, like 16, 16 years old to like. It was my grandpa was an auto mechanic that same way. Yeah, like so from, just forever. Yeah, and he was also mayor pro tem, pro tem. So he's mayor pro tem of Dallas, also <laughs> as a grocery man. So there was that. There was that. It, it's hard to even think of Dallas as being like a little town that there was a community that yeah. people were all together, really trying to figure it out. I mean, you have. I mean, you got the Waltons doing all what they're doing, but mm -hmm. then you have this small little town with all these people coming here, but you have direct access. I keep meeting the coolest people for right. whatever reason, people are just letting me in their little world and they're connecting me with all these people. Um, but I feel like it's a place where you can actually make a difference. And like, if you were like, oh, I wanna do something, this is a place where it's right there. This is my hypothesis, because people ask me why it's so friendly here all the time. And I'm like, I think it's because nobody's from here. And so we all know what it's like to be the new person in yeah. town and we go out of our way to make sure everyone feels welcome and connected and plugged in. Yeah, it's it because then well, it's funny because it's funny we were talking about earlier, like um, where it's where it's so hard. What would you call it? where you where you you don't leave your little town? Your oh, uh, escape velocity. Escape velocity. Everybody from L.A. has the ability to escape velocity. Yes, it's they the only reason there. why people nobody dates because I mean it's impossible to date because it's all the same person all trying to date each other because, and it's everybody that's like kind of a control freak. Everybody that's a dreamer, High everybody's performer. everybody that's really trying to do stuff on their own mm -hmm. that don't, you know what I mean? That they're like, yeah. this is my dream and I'm going to choose mine. And you can't, there's no one, there's no one that's like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to support you on your dream. Like there's right. none of that. Right. Um, so, but unlike there where there's the entertainment industry and like, it's like you're, everybody's competing. Like, you know, I tell people I do reality TV and out of work actor will look at me and be like, yeah, I don't watch reality TV. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, I'm just trying to earn a living. Right. Um, but here people aren't trying to, people want everybody to be great. Everybody wants this town to be great. Everything about this place there's, there's really not an ego when it comes to, I think there is, like, I just ignore it. I mean, there might right. be some of that stuff that's around, but everyone that I meet true. I mean, I've literally met people and they're like, oh my God, you're great. I got to introduce you to these six yes. people. I, Cause every time I'm in a conversation with somebody, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to connect these two people. And it is, I think in the spirit of building this area up and like the sum is greater than the parts. And so we want to bring the right parts together and see what happens. Okay, if you were moving to Bentonville, right? So we have the downtown Bentonville. I feel super lucky that I got in when I did because yeah. I for sure could not probably afford it now. In fact, I could not afford it now. Um, so I got really lucky. Where would you go? Like, where are the places where you think people should like, if you, let's say if you made, you know, if you just came here and you're trying to get started. Mm -hmm. So if you are 
in my opinion, and it, everybody has different life goals, but like for the creatives and the people who get here and like they go out one time on a mountain bike and they're like, holy crap, that, this is actually a whole lot of fun. Um, and you can't afford downtown Bentonville. I would look to Bella Vista. I think Bella Vista is a lot of fun and it's so beautiful. Yeah, that's and now I there are all so. these houses that are essentially right in, right out, you know, because the trails just are behind everybody's house. I also, I moved to, I, I own a house in downtown Bentonville that's an investment property. And I moved my family to an older part of Rogers, East Rogers, close to downtown, where there's all these mid-century houses. Okay. And we have a pool and we have like, a third of an acre and old neighbors that do bring us pies and things, you know, like it, it reminds me of the neighborhood I grew up in. There are trees. Um, it just is a different vibe and I could get what I wanted for a reasonable working person's wage. Um, now there are a lot of people who, um, move here and like the Dallas kind of personality, they kind of tend to like the suburb, area part of southwest bentonville like um out by southwest regional airport road all those developments of new construction okay. out there or they like the newer part of rogers where top golf and all that stuff is where you have um or Kill me now. cave springs Kill me now. <laughs> centerton <laughs> you know those kinds of areas where they're very dense very development mm -hmm. you know you can tell like cookie cutter farmer john sold 20 acres to Dr. Horton and don't bink, bink, bink. here's yeah here's yeah. here's Very your nice Edward Scissors hands um, yeah yes nothing wrong with it. it's what I grew up in yeah you know, so they're nice know. nice homes um, but they are very similar you, you know there's like four different floor plans and but if you have if you are a social person and have tons of kids getting in one of those neighborhoods with yeah, amenities that's, that's the other is thing. Yeah, a dream that's the because other thing. then you just send your kids outside kids, yeah kids yeah. are a whole other thing. and a lot of like, the neighborhoods in fact, are I saw somebody somebody I know that moved out of downtown. Because they just, they just, they go, man, we just need to be somewhere. We just let the kids out. Yeah, it's like just a let them outside. Community and they just yeah. go and play in the. And a lot of those neighborhoods are on the so Greenway. They have so, money, so they can come back. Yeah, right. See, so they'll just do a tour of duty out yeah, there and then they'll come back. Um, Fayetteville, like my Austin people, people that move here from Austin want to look at houses in Fayetteville. So they come in and they see, like when they're looking at houses online, the only houses that they like the style of are in Fayetteville. And so we go to Fayetteville and they're like, it's just 30 minutes from Bentonville. And I'm like, you're right. It is. But it's a different kind of commute. For some reason, it feels much farther than like if you get on, what is that, the PCH or the 405 in L.A., like you can go, it could take you 45 minutes to go five miles. Right. But in worst case scenario, like if the zombies came, you could get out and run. What do you, what do, what's next for Stephanie Funk? What do you, what, what, cause I, you know, now that I've, now that we've gotten, to, we've all gotten to know at you. I know, I know I could, I could feel you starting to wonder like, Where's all this going? Right. You know, um, I, I can tell you, here? Where, why are we here? What are we doing? I think getting to know anyone is like, it, it's the inspiration of what people bring to the table, right? I think mm -hmm. for, for me, what, what's inspiring about you and, you know, getting to know you, I, I, it was, you know, for someone to come, first off, to be split up from her sister. We, we don't have time to get into that, but to right. be split up by your sister and, you know, live through that craziness where, you know, you didn't live in the same town as your sister. So it's kind of like you had totally different lives. One of you guys had one life, completely different lives, but, but sisters then to come out of that. And it, and it's little rock, Arkansas from back in the day, right. little rock, Arkansas. I mean, it people, rough. it's rough out there. Like there's a lot of, you know, the Delta is a whole different world. Do you know that I went to an all girls Catholic school and two girls out of my class of 115 are in prison for the rest of their lives for killing their parents. Oh, wow. See, there you go. It's a bit of a drug problem. If you want to move to a uh, little rock, there, you know, I'm just kidding. I'm Little Rock's great. I'm here. It's great. It. I won't go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's I'm not, not investing in real estate there. I'll no, put it that no, way. No, it's it's you know it's it's just got some work. And I think of Little yeah. Rock. Once this place gets built up, I think it will influence the. I, yeah. I think Little Rock was hoping it would do the opposite, but yeah. I think what's really happening is Northwest Arkansas is the place to be. And it's the it's the changing of what Arkansas is. This Which, is very much of a yeah. open minded. You know, the spirit of Bentonville is a very open minded town. Arkansas has obviously not been that through the history, and no. to see it change. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't an open minded place. Well, and let me tell you, like I know that I couldn't have had my startup 
in Little Rock because in Little Rock it is still dominated by the good old boy network and you right. pay your dues and you climb the ladder and this is the process and we don't detract from it. Here there is no ladder. If you have an idea and you can get somebody to fund it, like you could we could walk out this door of this room right now and there's probably an investor sitting on the other side of that wall and if your pitch was good enough, yeah. you could get some money and, and start. And, it. and by the way, there's a lot of money here. Yeah. There's just a lot of money from a lot of different yeah. areas. Um but to meet someone like you, and it's funny because I've done, a, you know, I I know a broken record and I know I've done reality TV. Um, <laughs> what is it that you do? Damon? I know it's what I do reality TV. Um, <laughs> but I've talked to so many people and, you know, when you've been able to walk through fire and come out the other side and then come out to your side, other side successful, um, you didn't have anything easy. You, mm -hmm. you, you had a separation in life. You had a mother that was going through deep stuff. You were raised by your grandparents. Then you got out, or, or divorced, right? Mm -hmm. Divorced. So figured, lost a husband. Oh yeah, lost a husband. There you go. Lost a husband. Yep. Died. Then, you know, married, came out here, found your way, startup business, got a divorce. <laughs> but for someone like you to have been through all of that, but then also started a company, um, been through an addiction, mm -hmm. come out the other side and start a whole new life. And built a whole foundation for your family is an inspiration to all women and people. Because um, you're not, you're also a philan I mean, you're also creating and inspiring other people and trying to promote things within this town. Um, it's inspiring to me. I'll, I'll gladly be your mentor. Oh, I appreciate that. I really need it. I really do need it. <laughs> to see that you be able to do something like that and you, for people to hear it from you, mm -hmm. it, it anyone in the world that comes to Bentonville could kind of do the same thing. If like, mm -hmm. if... If they feel like that they're stuck in their world, because this town is changing. This town yeah. is changing at a rapid place, a rapid pace. Um, that if you decided that you wanted to change and you wanted to be somewhere else, that this is a place that you could probably make that happen. Absolutely. When I left my startup, I could essentially go anywhere. I could have gotten a job in the advertising or influencer marketing space anywhere. And I looked at different geographies and different places. And ultimately it came down to... I, and this is an oversimplification, but like I can go be a small fish in a very, very big ocean anywhere, or I can stay here and be essentially a big fish in a small pond and leave an impact of some sort. I don't know what that is, what that impact is, but I know that by continuing to work on myself and be of service to the people around me, it, the journey that's unfolding has been insanely rewarding and is, is it's just fun, you know, and here life here is fun. And so if you are, it's a good time. It's a good time. And it's a good time here in Bentonville. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're looking for somewhere to go, you're right. That's the exact point. Like you, if you want to be a part of a place where you can have actual impact and actual access, like you said before, proximity, in my opinion, proximity is power. And so, you know, here we're all two degrees from Tom Walton, basically, or Alice, or, you know, if there's, if you want to know somebody at SC Johnson or at Nickelodeon or whatever, they're here. They're here. Yeah. You can actually pitch something here and have much better odds of just being in, I don't know where else, Chicago and hoping to someday find an opportunity. Like it's everywhere here. So if somebody wants to move to Bentonville, I assume you want them to call you. Yes, absolutely. Please call me. So if if you're wanting to move to Bentonville, Stephanie Funk at oh, how do you say it? So yeah, Stephanie so at Engel and Volkers. So let me tell you, um it's German and it's hard to say. Engel and Volkers. Engel and Volkers. Um, but I'm pretty easy to find on the internet. I'm everywhere. Oh, that's so right. She Stephanie is, Funk. She is uh, a TikToker. I am a TikToker. She's a TikToker. She is uh, quite TikTok famous here in Bentonville. <laughs> so if you, what is your TikTok handle? At Stephanie G Funk. At Stephanie G Funk. Do you do Instagram as well? Mm -hmm. Is that also at Stephanie it G is. Funk? I like to keep it simple for the people. Yeah, I'm I'm at Good Times Us. There you go. Everything. Yeah. Everything across the board. Yeah. So and Engel and Volkers is actually impossible to spell. So like I don't ever like don't yeah. try to spell it. Just just look for me and you will find me. 
Well, I appreciate you so much for coming on The Good Time Show. It's been a good time. It has been such a good time. I appreciate you. I don't want you to worry. There's This is going to be great. Um, <laughs> no, I, Heavy I, editing. Uh, Heavy uh, yeah, editing. no, it's not, not at all. Not at all. It's a lot of fun. This has been, a, a, you know, you were a lot of fun. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for being on The Good Time Show. Once again, everybody, please tune in and follow me wherever you want to hear this podcast. We're everywhere. Um, if you want to see it on video, then you can see it on YouTube. You can see it on Spotify. And I think that's it. And the YouTubers say you're supposed to smash that subscribe button. Oh, you're supposed to smash that subscribe button. That's the one thing I have not gotten yet. So anyway, thank you guys for listening to this Good, good Time show. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Stephanie. And everybody have a good time. Well, that's our show. If you didn't get a chance to watch the episode, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. You can also listen to The Good Time Show on Apple Podcasts or any other platform. We are always trying to grow our Planet Good Times community, so subscribe and follow us at Good Times Us on almost all social media platforms. This episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas, a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody.